Joe Biden has never had any involvement or any direct or indirect financial interest in those activities. None. Do you take that at face value, Jessica? Yeah, I'm, you shouldn't go before a committee and tell lies. And I don't expect that James Biden is doing that. I don't know why Jim Comer and Jim Jordan thought that perhaps it was going to be Joe Biden's brother that brought him down. But uh, this is the path that they've chosen to take. And honestly, I'm surprised that they have this high of a threshold for humiliation. Every witness that they have called has decimated their arguments from Devin Archer to Peter Schwerin to Marvin Young. And then we have the guy behind the Holy Grail document, the 1023, Alexander Smirnov, mm -hmm. who's found that he had lied right about the charges, the five million dollars that went to both of them. And then it gets even better. Not only did he lie. He was lying because the Russians were feeding him the disinformation. Mm. It's so embarrassing. I think Jamie Raskin was spot on when he said that this impeachment inquiry really ended yesterday when we found out that we have a Russian asset that was foundational to this impeachment inquiry. And uh, Jim Comer and Jim Jordan should maybe try doing something for their constituents and let this go because it's going nowhere. OK, let me push back on that a little bit, Jessica, with Sean here, because, you know, whether this is legal or not, we don't know yet. Of course, that's that's what the Oversight Committee is trying to get to, Sean. But even though James Biden is saying that. Got Jasmine Crockett and uh, Joe Scarborough coming up, who for me, just excuse the cliche, uh, I'm being really honest here. They hit the nail on the head in terms of everything that's going on uh, with the Republican Party, their obsession with Hunter Biden, their obsession with trying to find something to use, uh, to smear. Uh, and Jim Jordan and Matt Gates this Wednesday morning should almost hide their faces in shame. I find it incredible that both of them have been subject to allegations themselves, allegations which haven't really gone away. They're just trying to avoid uh, answering questions, yet they appear to be very confident in pointing the finger at other people. I just hope that when these allegations are properly investigated, uh, that Fox put the same level of attention on Jim Jordan and Matt Gates. Let me just ask you the question straight. Would you, if you had an opportunity right now, investigate Jim Jordan and Matt Gates? Yes or no? comment section press the like button if it's a yes and about the president's involvement in a bribery scheme now that alexander smirnov has proven to have doesn't, made it up and it was based change, off russian intelligence doesn't change the four fundamental facts hunter biden was on the put on the board of burisma gets paid a million dollars a year fact number two he's not qualified to be on the board he said so himself in an interview i don't know with you or, or some network Fact number three, Zolotevsky and Pazarsky, the two executives at Burisma, specifically asked Hunter Biden, can you weigh in with D.C. and help us deal with the pressure we are facing from the prosecutor? Fact number four, Joe Biden, then, then he gets called. Hunter Biden calls his dad, according to Devin Archer, Hunter Biden's business partner. Fact number four, Joe Biden then goes to Ukraine three days later and conditions the release of the money. American tax money on the firing of the prosecutor who was applying the pressure to the company the Hunter Biden set on the board but up. You said, you, said, you said the 1023 is the most corroborating piece of information it you have. It corroborates, but it doesn't, it doesn't change those fundamental facts. So now, It's not true. Well, so, okay, so it's, it's the, the FBI told us that this source was so important. Your reaction to the FBI informant here, who apparently was peddling false allegations and may have been the uh, source of Russian disinformation. Uh, was it right to promote a bribery scheme for the president based on that? Today we're asking questions to James Biden, and I don't think that's really Burisma focused, that's more China focused. So we're going to ask him about some of his business relationships with the Chinese government. This is the same FBI that denied that that, that document even existed. But what evidence do you have of a bribery scheme now? We've got lots of evidence. Now we know that Russian intelligence operatives were behind creating the propaganda and disinformation at the very foundation of this investigation. So I think it's time for uh, Chairman Comer and the Republicans to fold up the circus tent and we should get back to work for the American people. Certainly it was a, a shattering revelation yesterday when we learned that Smirnov was collecting his information from Russian intelligence operatives that were at the very base 
of this whole investigation. Uh, yesterday's revelations demonstrate that Putin's pattern of interference and destabilization of uh, foreign democratic elections around the world, including in America, has continued to this very day. Um, and this impeachment investigation is nothing but a wild goose chase that is based on Russian disinformation and propaganda. The craziest thing about this Smirnov guy, the FBI, DOJ, uh, have now ascertained as well that Jim Jordan, James Comer's principal informer, had links to an assassination squad. Yet still, Fox just turn a blind eye. It's like, what should we throw? Can we throw some mud? Will it stick somewhere? No, it's not working. But hey, they think they're doing a good job. You want to just detail for us what you believe is the most egregious here and what is the evidence that you feel that Joe Biden, in fact, did participate in all of this? I mean, it seems pretty obvious, but you still have the Democrats, including uh, Democrats in Congress, your colleagues, who say there's nothing here, particularly after the Smirnoff uh, indictment. The, the Smirnoff and doesn't change four fundamental facts relative to Burisma. Hunter Biden gets put on the board, gets paid a lot of money, a million dollars a year. Fact two, Hunter Biden's not qualified to be on the board. He said it himself when he was doing an interview, I think, with ABC News. Fact number three, the executives at Burisma ask Hunter Biden to weigh in because they're under pressure from the prosecutor. Fact number four, Joe Biden goes to Kiev and fires the prosecutor, and he does so by leveraging, conditioning the release of our tax money on the firing of the prosecutor, applying the pressure to the company his son sat on the board of and made a million dollars a year from. Those are facts that do not change, and it's a tale as old as time. You got I think the, the simplicity of Trump's presentation is sort of augmented by the fact that he's just saying the truth. My revenge will be my success. I listen to you. An attack on me is an attack on you. Those are truths, and they're simple to understand. And I think that- Did Hunter smoke crack at the White House? Excuse me. He does look remarkably like his brother. That's James Biden, the younger brother of President Joe Biden, going in for his on-the-record testimony, but is behind closed doors. Vlad, good morning. The developments come after the FBI's recent arrest of a man named Alexander Smirnov, who is charged with making a false statement and creating a fictitious record about the president's son, Hunter, and ties to a Ukrainian energy company. In a new court filing, federal prosecutors allege one of the FBI's own longtime informants spun bogus tales about President Biden and his son Hunter after meeting with Russian intelligence officials. According to the memo released during a detention hearing, Alexander Smirnov falsely claimed Hunter Biden and President Biden were part of a multi-million dollar bribery scheme involving Ukrainian energy company Burisma. I've never spoken to my son about this. Prosecutors claim Smirnov had contact with Russian foreign agents, including one described as a Russian official who controls groups that are engaged in overseas assassination efforts. People in the Russian government would not ex uh, execute an operation that they didn't think at least had tacit approval from Vladimir Putin. Prosecutors say soon after Smirnov's arrest in Nevada last week, he claimed it was Russian intelligence officials who shared a fake story about Hunter Biden. The special counsel argues Smirnov's contacts are extensive and extremely recent and that he's a risk to peddle Russia's lies in its attempt to interfere in the 2024 election and dissuade congressional support of Ukraine aid. Putin desperately wants that to go away. He wants the United U.S. support, preferably all of Western European and Eastern European support, to go away so that he can uh, achieve his goals, uh, uh, as evil as they might be, uh, in Ukraine. Democrats argue the impeachment inquiry into President Biden should now be dropped, but Republicans will plow ahead with a closed-door interview today with the president's brother, James, and then next Wednesday with Hunter Biden. As for Smirnoff, he has been released under restrictions pending trial. Tony? A highly credible FBI source alleges that Joe Biden received $5 million in exchange for pressuring for the firing of a Ukrainian prosecutor. Ukraine is open for reform. Мало того, реформы начаты. Второе. Украина очень большой инвестиционный потенциал.
Or, what were your qualifications to be on the board of Burisma? Well, I was vice chairman of the board of Amtrak for five years. I was the chairman of the board of the UN World Food Program. I was a lawyer for Boyce, Schiller, Flexner, one of the most prestigious law firms in the world. Bottom line is that I know that I was completely qualified to be on the board to head up the corporate governance and transparency um, a committee on the board. And that's all that I focused on. This amendment? This amendment claims that Hunter Biden has cooperated with this committee's investigation. How has he cooperated with the investigation if he has not abided by a congressional subpoena? Abby Lowell has never discussed scope or logic with us, and we have identified at least two checks directly to Joe Biden where we traced the money directly through the Biden influence peddling schemes. That is a fact. We have published evidence. This isn't like Adam Schiff and the Steele dossier where he, you just make stuff up. We have produced bank records, and bank records don't lie. So Mr. Biden mocked our legitimate congressional impeachment inquiry and flew to D.C. to hang out outside of Congress and did not show his face for a deposition. He is not in compliance. He openly defied a congressional subpoena. Do any other members wish to speak on this amendment? Um, Mr. Chairman. Cha Chair recognizes Mr. Raskin. Um, I, I want to yield back to Mr. Goldman. Before I do, I just want to pose a question to you. When you said that there was documented checks involving the president in an influence scheme, are you referring to the auto loan repayment checks between Joe and Hunter Biden? You mean the Porsche he got from Uzbekistan? What, which auto are you? I, I don't know what kind of car, but are, are those the checks that you're referring the, to? The checks we're referring to were uh, a check for $200,000 that came through the influence peddling scheme with AmeriCorps Health and the $40,000 check that came through the influence peddling scheme with China, where I believe Mr. Bobulinski has stated publicly was a company that Joe Biden was supposed to be 10% owner. Okay, I'll reclaim my time. I think... In both cases, I mean, there, there were a lot of words there, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, but I think you're referring to the auto loan repayment with Hunter Biden. You're referring to the James Biden repayment. But <clears throat> if you've got documented receipts of foreign governments giving money directly to President Joe Biden, that's an outrageous violation of the Monuments Clause, like the $7.8 million that Donald Trump pocketed while he was president, which for some reason you guys don't care about because you think the Constitution only applies to Democrats and not to Donald Trump because, hey, that, you know, that's an that's a identifying characteristic of an authoritarian political party. It's got uh, a charismatic leader whose word is considered above the Constitution, above the rule of law. You refuse to accept the results of democratic elections that don't go your way if you're an authoritarian party, and then you refuse to disavow or you embrace political violence as an instrument for obtaining and maintaining political power. So you guys didn't like when uh, President Biden said that your party under Donald Trump has fallen into semi-fascist ways of operation. If the shoe semi-fits, you semi-wear it, okay? Now, I'd like to yield back to uh, Mr. Would Goldman. the gentleman yield to a question? Well, the, um, yeah, I'll take okay. a quick question. Look, I just want to clarify. We, we have a wire that went directly from CEFC, which banks have identified as a state-owned entity from China, that this wire went from CEFC to Hunter Biden, then to Joe Biden for $40,000. Okay. Joe Biden has been directly implicated in the family okay. influence peddling scheme at least okay, three I, times. I, no, you, you haven't. You, you, you have not, I've not, you have, never seen that. You, you have not well, produced read the you, bank memo. You, you have not you, produced the 40,000 is for Jim Biden. But, 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 no, 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 no. The 200,000 is, from, is for, from Jim Biden. The 40,000 is from Hunter Biden. All right, but please produce I, the I documentation. We have, I have it. We have four bank we, memorandums. To give it to the members of this committee and four we, bank memorandums. Okay, I'll, I'll reclaim four. my time, Mr. Chair. There Trip. has never been a more substantive. I'm saving my time. You go ahead, but I'm saving my time. In the seven years I've been in Congress. All right, let me say this: the Democrats undertook a serious investigation, despite every effort by the chairman to undermine it, and we determined there were 7.8 million dollars documented receipts from foreign governments to Donald Trump. You guys don't care about that. That's unfortunate. Will the yield? But if you've got documented- Will the ranking member yield? Yeah, we will in just a moment. Let me make my point, okay? Uh, if you have documented receipts of foreign governments writing checks or giving credit card payments 
to Joe Biden, show it to us. We've been at this for a year now. We haven't seen anything. Then we show you in our more than 100-page report the documented receipts of money going to Donald Trump, but you don't care about it. In other words, you don't care about the principle that our government leaders should not be on the take from foreign governments. That's outrageous. Well, the because I, I, I will oppose any government official of any political party who's on the take with money from foreign governments, and I hope you would join me in that. And yet we've shown it to you, and yet you guys don't care about it. I mean, that's just unfathomable to me. Now, at least the, the Trump family has responded to it. Well, I mean, the they're very nervous about it. You know what Trump said? The Trump's people say, well, he didn't take his $400,000 government salary. You know what? That's the only thing you're allowed to take is your salary from Americans, not money from corrupt Saudi monarchs who order the assassination of journalists, not from Chinese communist bureaucrats crushing the human rights Please. of people in Tibet and the Uyghurs. You're not supposed to be on the take from those governments. That's what our Constitution says. Then they say, well, we return the profits. These guys don't, these guys think it's, uh, well, if it's a hotel, they could just keep the money. At least the Trump family understands some lawyer told them what the Constitution says. We return the profits. Well, guess what? They didn't give us the accounting of the profits, and that's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says you can't take any payments at all from a foreign government without going to the Congress of the United States. It's not that you can't keep the profits from foreign governments. Do you guys understand what you're doing here? You're putting that Gentlemen, White House Gentlemen, time's expired. Sale. Chair, recognize Mr. Timmon from uh, South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My colleagues across the aisle missed the point here. The Trump family has uh, pre-existing businesses built over decades, hotels all over the world, and President Trump divested himself of control over those businesses to his children, and business uh, arms link transactions between foreign governments and between uh, the Trump International Hotel chain, it, there's actually an arms link transaction. They're getting hotel rooms, they're getting food and uh, whatever from these hotels. So. The difference is this, the Biden family doesn't produce anything. They don't have anything. They don't have hotels. They don't have services rendered. There are none. Hunter Biden has said that he was on the board of Burisma and he has no qualifications. They actually cannot document any service rendered by the Biden family, whether it's Jim Biden, whether it's Hunter Biden. So that's the issue. The issue is that the Biden family, all they have is the big guy and his policy uh, favoritism. And that's why we're here. And I, I just think y'all are muddy in the water, and it's not doing the American people justice. Would With the that, gentleman yield? yield back. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, I will yield to. I thank the gentleman. I, I do want to point out that, to the point that Mr. Timmons was making, that the operation of the Trump Hotel was a legitimate <laughs> enterprise that was approved by this committee in 2013, <laughs> before President Trump was elected to office. Uh, but prior to that, it was the old post office, it was losing $6 million per year. The turnaround was a plus $3 million that went to the federal government. And as Mr. Timmons pointed out, it was divested to the family, to the, to the children. Well, it's not run by the president. Will you yield for a question on that? I'll yield for a question. Well, when you say it was divested, are you claiming that Donald Trump surrendered any ownership interest because he continued to own it. He put it into a trust for his sole benefit. He said the day-to-day -day management would be turned over to his sons, but he was still the beneficial owner of it, and he stayed involved, as we know, because he kept talking about all the business that was coming in from abroad. Well, the gentleman's question is legitimate in the context that most elected officials put their assets in trust for their own benefit after they leave office. But he it was not a blind trust. Forced. He should not be forced to... Uh, divest himself of the asset, an asset that was approved by this committee. No, no I'm afraid Mr. not. You're I'm, referring I'm reclaiming, to... I'm reclaiming okay. the time yielded to me by Mr. Timmons to point out that what, what is happening right here should concern every American citizen because we refuse to prosecute, to investigate and prosecute corruption. We, we are constantly pounded about corruption in other countries, but we've got corruption right here that we do not... We, we form partisan sides on this thing, and we don't do our job. We have done, I've been here nine years and seven days and gone through multiple hearings in the Oversight Committee dealing with corruption, and it turns into a partisan uh, battle when we ought to be 
trying to make sure that we restore the American people's confidence in this government. What, we, what Hunter Biden should have done, he should have presented himself in answer to the subpoena. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to take sides in this. I want the evidence to speak for itself, and it will never speak for itself if we don't have people come before the committee as they're required to do. Will well, the gentleman yield for a question? Can I, would you yield for one final question? I'll yield to the gentleman. Thank you kindly. Um, and, and thank you for the spirit and the substance of your remarks, uh, which I think significantly uplift the tone of the conversation. Um, you would agree with me that the Emoluments Clause applies to government officials, and presumably you would agree with me that Hunter Biden is not and has never been a government official. So this is about a relative of the president, right? So we have Donald Trump, who's collecting $7.8 million at least. It's probably four or five times that much, and that's just during the presidency. But he, and he Mr. was Chairman, president. Me my time. And he was president. It's, 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 Mr. Timmons' uh, time. Um, oh. Ranking member, do you have any evidence that Donald Trump received any of this money you're alleging that was received by the Trump Hotel Organization? Yes, he bragged about it, and in fact, he returned Sorry. what he called the profits to the government, which gave the game right, so, away. So $8 million in revenue, of which you don't know what the costs were associated with that, <laughs> and you don't have any evidence that the president actually received any of this money, by the way. Oh, we've got all the evidence. Read our, have you read our so, report yet, Mr. Timmons? What, what is the amount of money that you allege he's received? $7.8 million, million, and it's a not tiny true. fraction. That's just factually inaccurate. Have you read our report? That's revenue. It's not, I, it's not, I it's not I teach you to read the report. I'll read any book you want me to read, any poem, any ghost story, whatever it is. <laughs> read the report, well, please. Well, read the field, report. please. Uh, my time's expired. Mr. Uh, gentlemen, time's expired. Before I recognize the next member, since Mr. Raskin's into reading, okay. I'd like to submit uh, to the record the last bank memorandum, the bank memorandum that details the Chinese wire that went to Hunter Biden, then to Joe Biden. It's in the bank memorandum. Very, this is this is substantive memorandum. This is the fourth memorandum. If you need the other three, we will resend them to you. Mr. Chairman, can I introduce something for the record too before we break? A, yes, but uh, without objection, we entered in the fourth bank memorandum into the record. Now you have something, Mr. Ashkin. Yes, um, this comes from Newsweek. Uh, this is uh, Republican Congressman Andy Biggs warns his party has quote nothing to campaign on. Uh, without objection, I object. Ordered. I object has nothing to do with subject at hand. Oh, well, it was very much discussed by the members today. I, I still object. Okay, could I call for a vote on that then, Mr. Chairman? Yeah? Yeah, we, I mean. All right, thank you. We, 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 Let's get our members we'll to vote. We'll, we'll, we'll do a, we'll, all right, all those in favor of entering into the record, a new aye. story, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no, no. It's a like recorded vote, Mr. Chairman. Recorded vote. Re recorded votes uh, called as previously announced. Further proceedings on the question will be postponed. We have votes coming up on the House floor. So, all right. Uh, okay. Uh, we have votes on the House floor. Have they been called? Votes on the House floor are going to be called in, in 30 minutes. We will recess until uh, the last vote has been uh, recorded. Then we'll reconvene and take up the amendments and the, and the votes. Remarks. Uh, I'd like to just add a couple of points to what you've said. On January 6th, Senator Ted Cruz described it as terrorism. They later came to attack him during their revisionist uh, Orwellian Stalinist attempt to rewrite history. Unfortunately for them, we know that there were 147 or 48 of our officers who were wounded, bloodied, and hospitalized by the uh, rabid mob that beset the Capitol that day. We know that Kevin McCarthy, one of their deposed leaders over on their side, called Donald Trump from his office to complain about how his people were storming the Capitol and putting people's lives in danger. And Donald Trump said, no, no, those aren't my people, those are Antifa. And McCarthy corrected him and said, no, those are your people, Mr. President. To which Donald Trump said, well, maybe they just care a little bit more about who won the election than you did. 
Kevin McCarthy. You guys have got to deal with reality here. By the way, the speech and debate clause stands for the exact opposite principle who our distinguished new member uh, uh, just spoke about a moment ago. It says that members, that members of Congress Mr. cannot Chairman, be questioned Mr. anywhere Chairman. else other than Congress. So Point he should privilege. read the speech or debate Mr. clause Chairman. aloud. Let, 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 him, let him finish his sentence there. Now, Chair recognizes Mr. Burchett Mr. from Tennessee Chairman. for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my colleagues seem to want to talk about the justice system, so let's talk about it. In November of last year, the chairman issued a subpoena to Hunter Biden to appear on December 7th, uh, December 13th, excuse me, for a closed door deposition. Instead of respecting the rule of law, Hunter Biden chose to give a press conference on the front steps of the Senate. To, so, to, to show such contempt for Congress without fear of repercussions highlights a theme throughout this administration and Democrat administrations before it. If you're a big name Democrat, then you're immune to prosecution. Former Attorney General Eric Holder said as much in a memo he wrote regarding collateral consequences. For those who don't know, the collateral consequence policy allowed prosecutors to consider whether charging a company or individual will result in greater societal harm than not charging them. It's why the banks weren't held criminally accountable to the fallout of the 2008 financial crisis. It is why Jeffrey Epstein's clients aren't behind bars. It's also the mindset of President Biden and his family. Too big to jail. Not too big to fail, too big to jail. The two-tier justice system is a disgrace to our country and the principles it was founded on. I thank the chairman and the committee for the hard work they put in to hold the Biden administration accountable, but I doubt our Justice Department has the guts or the wherewithal to do anything about it. And I would like to yield my time to my friend from Florida, Byron Donalds. Actually, I, actually I'll yield. Yeah, yield let, me, let me yield to Miss May. She hasn't gotten enough quality well, TV time no. today, so I'll give her a little more time. Uh, thank you, and then I'll yield to my colleague from Florida. Well. I'm going to try to be quick here because I was accused by my colleague on the other side of the aisle about my white privilege. I want to say, number one, as a former ranking member of the Civil Rights Subcommittee under Chairman Raskin last session, I take great pride as a white female Republican to address the inadequacies in our country. I come from a district where rich and poor is literally black and white, black versus white on most days. My largest jail in my district, which is the largest jail in the, sa jail in the state of South Carolina, has had seven or eight deaths in the last two years. And I was there with our black and African-American council members trying to get the right thing done. And I come from a district where black men have been killed by law enforcement, tased to death in our jails. And I've stood with those black families because I know the differences that they see day to day in their life. And I try to do the best that I can. I come from a district where the first African-American, first black man in the U.S. House of Representatives was Joseph P. Rainey, represented my district back in the 1800s with that. The last black member of the U.S. House of Representatives before Reconstruction came from South Carolina, George P. Murray. The, the, the black man, former slave, an entrepreneur who founded the Republican Party in South Carolina, one of the founding members was named Robert Smalls, who commandeered a, a Confederate ship and gave it to Union soldiers and served his country admirably in the process. In my district, it was Harriet Tubman. And you can see it in the movie, movie Harriet, who rescued more than 700 slaves in one night in Beaufort County, South Carolina. So I am very well aware of our rich history and try to recognize it as best as I can and the position that I have, and I resent the fact that you're going to throw that in my face up here. I'm one of the few people that you'll see on my side of the aisle trying to do the right thing to the right people every single day, and I would like to yield the remaining uh, balance of time to my colleague from Florida. Uh, this has been a very interesting hearing. Mr. Waltz, welcome to Oversight. Yes, it usually gets like this. Uh, look, let's be very clear. This isn't about Hunter Biden's white privilege. It's about Hunter Biden's Democrat privilege because Donald Trump Jr. showed up for five congressional subpoenas. There was never this circus where he was subpoenaed by House Democrats and he showed up on the Senate side or showed up at the White House to answer in some fake, phony, lame press conference, not actually going to the House and doing what he was compelled by a subpoena to do. Hunter Biden did that. And then he has the unmitigated gall to show up here when we know that he's, we're going through actually the, the legislation for contempt, with, by the way, Mr. Chairman, we should actually get to the legislation of contempt. The speechifying is great, but let's do our business members. Um, he has the gall to come here, show up, and then when the Democrats are saying, hey, he wants to speak, he leaves. This is a joke. This is a farce. 
The man has been subpoenaed by Congress. Oh, and by the way, the January 6th committee, Mr. Raskin, which you did sit on, by the way, that was not a normally ordered committee of Congress because Nancy Pelosi did not want the Republican members that's, that then Leader McCarthy put up. According to the courts, it was. I was my time, sir. Will you fine. yield for I, a, no, I will a not, correction? I was respectful of your time. I didn't say anything. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's move forward with our business. He should be held in contempt. There was a subpoena. He did not answer it. Any other American will be held in contempt by Congress. Any other. This is Democrat privilege of the highest order. Let's do our jobs. I yield. Gentlemen, yield. Chair now recognize Ms. Ocasio-Cortez from New York. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to address briefly, um, quickly, that, that moment about uh, privilege and, and all of this that we're seeing here. Uh, it was a very beautiful speech uh, by the gentlelady um, who, as she mentioned, was uh, helped lead on the majority, the now majority side, uh, the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee. But I think it's so exemplary of the point that she also oversaw the elimination of the Civil Rights Subcommittee on this committee, which really kind of gives the whole game away. We show up, we give speeches, we give flowery words, but at the end of the day, participate in the structural erosion of the rights and representation of people uh, that, that are marginalized, women, people of color, people that just need to see their due process and civil liberties protected in this country. But I will move on. As also the Republican side had mentioned in their many uh, raisings of the January 6th committee, that it's not just Hunter Biden, you, me, any individual subject uh, to, to equal treatment under the law, to be held up to accountability under the law, but it is also these committees and this committee that is subject to oversight and law. We must comply with the law here as well. Now, I may be one of the very few people that actually believes in Congress, you know, in this country, but I do, and many of us do here. And we have an obligation to engage in good faith participation to execute and comply with a subpoena. The chairman said in front of the country several times to Hunter Biden, you can show up here in front of the world, in front of the public. Hunter Biden took him up on that offer. He said, I will show up in public. I will show up in public. He showed up here today. He showed up here in the past. And Mr. Chairman, I know you do your best with what you've got, but you've got members here that have submitted falsified evidence to the record. You have members here that have submitted and mischaracterized closed door hearings. And people want to say back and forth at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what party it's happened from. You've got members who've engaged in revenge porn in this committee. So it is understandable why Hunter Biden would want to testify in front of the public for the American people to be able to witness that testimony uh, it, for themselves. You've got members who've defied subpoenas. You've got members who we are um, one year into the term asking what the rules are at the beginning of the committee the book was given to us on day one and so what we should do is allow the man to testify i believe in the power of the oversight committee frankly i believe in it regardless of whether republicans or democrats have the chair because i believe that this committee should have the power of oversight and we cannot do that on a partisan basis and so for that, I implore this committee to allow Hunter Biden to testify publicly. I implore and I ask for that to happen. And we cannot do that by getting engaged in this back and forth on a, on a defiance of a subpoena. Let him comply. Let him do it today. Let him do it tomorrow. But let the man do it. And with that, I yield back to the ranking member. Thank you, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. I think you went right to the heart of the issue here. Um, you know, if this ended up going to court, Mr. Chairman, and I hope it doesn't, I really hope that this committee will act in a way to negotiate and, and uh, achieve a compromise with the witness. But if it goes to the court, it's going to present a novel question. What happens when a committee represented by its distinguished chairman goes out in public and repeatedly invites and challenges a witness to come before the committee, and then that witness gives the answer, yes, I will come in. At that point, the committee 
pulls a bait and switch and says, well, we actually don't want you to come before the full committee as was offered repeatedly in public by the chairman, but instead we'd like you to come to a back room and do it there in a closed deposition. Now, undoubtedly, if that had been the original offer, the committee would stand in a very good place, the way we did with Mr. Biggs and Mr. Perry and Mr. Jordan, because they were told to come in, they were subpoenaed, and they blew off the subpoenas uh, of the committee, which is why I don't think anybody should be voting on that side other than Ms. Mace, because Ms. Mace is the one who took the position that the rule of law means something. And I take the position, if we give somebody a subpoena, they should come in. But there's a very, there's a very sticky problem now. What happens when we give them one offer A and then switch it over to offer B? That's why I hope you will work it out, Mr. Chairman. Thank and, you for and yielding. Uh, gentlelady's time's expired. To, to respond to the gentlelady, he can come in for a hearing after the deposition.